Good evening, and welcome to the 2023 Youth Month Oratorical Contest for the High School Division. My name is Cameron Kelly. And I'm Devin Santis. Your co-MCs for tonight's event. In a few minutes, we'll hear from several contestants from various high schools throughout the island who will present a speech from this year's Youth Month theme, The Power of Resiliency. After all this is done, one of these youth participants will be selected to serve as the Youth Governor on Island Leadership Day, scheduled for April 27th. But don't worry, all other participants, including their alternates, will have opportunities to take part in the Island Leadership Day to serve in the various leadership roles throughout the government of Guam. This includes the Guam, leader, the Guam Legislature, Judiciary of Guam, Mayor's Council of Guam, and various government departments and agencies. Now, for a few announcements before we begin the program. This event is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Guam Legislature's YouTube channel. The restrooms are in the lobby area across the stairwell. Refreshments are provided in the lobby, and we kindly ask that you refrain from eating and drinking in the session hall. As courtesy to our presenters, please place your phones on silent, and should you need to take a call, please go outside the session hall. If you must leave the session hall, please open and close the door slowly, as it can be loud and distracting to those who are presenting. If you are taking pictures, please ensure the flash is off during the contest. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our dignitaries who are with us this evening. The Honorable Joshua F. Tenorio Segundu Magalahan Guahan, Lieutenant Governor of Guam. The Honorable Chris Barnett, Senator. In addition, I would also like to recognize those who are serving as tabulators, timekeepers, and photographers. If you could please stand to be recognized. Thank you. To give welcoming remarks, please welcome the Director of Department of Youth Affairs, Ms. Melanie Brennan. I'm too short for the podium, but Mike said I would have to go up there. But anyways, I just want to welcome everyone to the historic Congress building for DYA's signature event, the Oratorical Contest. This year's theme is the power of resiliency. And after watching yesterday's middle school competition, guys, they were amazing. And it gives us hope for the future. So not to put any pressure on you high school students, <laughs> but all of you really are um, the product of your interactions with the people that support you, like your families, your parents, your grandparents, your teachers, your whole support system. So we wish you luck. We want to thank um, the judges today, and we want to thank the DYE team for putting this event together. Thank you. Thank you, Director Brennan. To give his welcoming remarks, please welcome our Segundu Magalahan Guahan, Lieutenant Governor of Guam, the Honorable Joshua F. Tenorio. Half a day, everybody. So it's an exciting night. Uh, so let me first start by directing my comments to the six uh, competitors. So just imagine uh, I was, at one day, one time, I was 15 years old. And guess what? I was competing in the oratorical contest uh, when I was in high school. Uh, I didn't win, by the way. Uh, and um, uh, I want to tell you that uh, as I'm looking at you and thinking about how I felt going up there, I had no idea what everybody else was going to be saying. Um, and the learning ex part of me um, and the thing that really captivated me that night was just how many different voices and perspectives there were um, when we were um, talking about pretty much uh, say the same topic. Uh, and what it really points to is just how many different perspectives and the different talents and the different backgrounds that everybody is going to bring to this topic uh, that we're focusing on with resiliency. Um, you have just survived a pandemic um, that has occurred the last time was more than 100 years ago. 
and the pandemic in Guam more than 100 years ago had dire consequences. We experienced a big loss of life. In fact, as I was researching uh, my family tree, uh, I found out that my grandma's parents both died during the last pandemic. Uh, she didn't really know what it was like to have um, uh, parents later on in life. Here is a little different. We lost some life, but we saw, but we have science, we have technology, and from the youth, we saw so much different kinds of things that I feel assured um, that you're going to be, and I think you are, probably the strongest generation that is living right now. The last greatest generation was our wartime, the group that survived the war. You guys survived a pandemic, and you're going to be leading our island into a very prosperous future. So uh, I want to congratulate all of you for participating. By the way, I didn't win, so I already told you that. I became uh, the vice speaker of the Guam legislature uh, in Island Leadership Day. Uh, and I hope uh, Senator Barnett and the rest of the senators will have an opportunity to have a session. And I was able to sit in these chairs in um, the session hall um, and learn a lot more about the legislative process than I thought. Um, and I was able to uh, meet some people that turned out to be some of the most historic figures in our history. And I hope that your experience this year is going to bring you the same kind of excitement that I felt brought me those years ago. So good luck, congratulations, and have a great night. Jesus Masi. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Now some rules for the contest. Contestants are not allowed to use any electronic devices during their presentation. There is a three minute minimum and a five minute maximum for contestants to present their speeches. For every five seconds over a, uh, the five minute time, one point will be deducted. Contestants will be signaled off with a one minute warning such as, After each presentation, judges will be given a few minutes to complete their scoring. Now, the judges for tonight's event. But before I do that, I would like to note that none of the contestants knew who the ju judges were until right now. Our first judge is currently serving in his first term in the 37th Guam Legislature. He chairs both the Committee on Roles and the Committee on Public Safety, Education, and the Arts. Senator Barnett better known by his nickname, Malafunction. He got his start in the local media scene in 1997 with the Malafunction Show and racked up a 25-year broadcasting career, retiring in 2022 to run for public office. Senator Barnett brought his unique brand of comedy, satire, and perspective to the airwaves, and in the, pro in the process of doing that, built a dedicated audience spanning two decades. Senator Barnett also served as a, as a senior investigative correspondent for the KUAM News. Senator Barnett is, is dedicated to uh, tackling education and public safety issues head on with new approach and drive. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Chris Barnett. Our next judge is currently a sergeant with the Guam Police Department, a detective in the juvenile investigation section with over 15 years and is now the officer in charge. Sergeant Napti has helped develop, <laughs> has helped develop and facilitate some of the GDP, G, GPD's youth programs, such as DARE and GREAT. More recently, she and other fellow officers created the Safe Schools Initiative called Project U. In 2021, she spearheaded GPD's first ever youth summer program and Christmas break programs under Project U. These programs provide mentorship through a network of safe school par partners and streamline access to educational services beyond a typical classroom setting. To date, Project U continues to mature and is now the overarching youth program for the Guam Police Department. Sergeant Napati is also a certified fitness instructor and a health coach for the, for the department. She also hel helped to develop the police officer's physical 
ab abilities test. Sergeant Maggie also served, serves the students of Guam Community College as an adjudicator instructor <laughs> or uh, for various criminal justice related courses. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Maggie Napti. Our final judge is a son of Chuk. Although born on the island of Guam, he grew up most of his life on Chuk. His family moved to Guam when he was in the seventh grade until his freshman year at John F. Kennedy High School. In 2008, he moved back to Chuk, where he completed his high school and at Xavier High School. In 2011, he returned to Guam to attend the University of Guam, and in 2015, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Public Administration. Joel worked in the hotel and restaurant industry for over, for over nine years before joining the Micronesian Resources Center One Stop Shop family in 2019. He currently is the project, project director for the Micronesian Resources Center One Stop Shop, a uh, project that provides informational and educational resources to individuals and families from the Micronesian region. As a migrant himself, he feels deeply connected to the purposes and serves that, serves that the M MRCOSS project provides. He enjoys listening to, listening to and making music during his spare time, and he really loves pizza. Ladies and gentlemen, Joel Stik. And now, the introduction of the contestants. Earlier today, the contestants pulled numbers to determine the order of presenters. As I call your name, please stand. First, a 12th grader from Teedson High School, Daniel Cruz. Second, a 10th grader from Southern High School, Shayun Ann. Third, a 10th grader from John F. Kennedy High School, Nichelle Torsellino. Fourth, a ninth grader from St. John's School, Sumin Kim. Fifth, an 11th grader from the Academy of Our Lady of Guam, Ava Dinka. And lastly, an 11th grader from Father Duaneus Memorial School, Bernard Malakasi. Thank you. And our first presenter is Danielle Cruz. The day we are born is when the instinct we all share is brought into this world, even when we don't fully understand what it is. Throughout life is when the ups and downs of a journey from start to finish will determine the type of character you are within your own story. But what makes a story interesting despite being left unread? Each and every one of us is different from beginning to end, but the one thing we all share on the day we are born is a special gift. You question how you can stand up after being struck down by others. You question how you can take the harsh words from your peers. You question how you can push forward despite everything. That's because the day you were born, you were gifted a will that burns like no other, a will of fire that pushes through despite many trying to put it out. You were gifted the power of resilience. 
Harvard University had suggested that resilience is built upon the external experiences you face in your lifetime. It's awoken from the supportive relationships, adaptive capacities, and the positive and negative experiences you face in your lifetime. You could think of all the times you were beaten down on the ground or called names that made it difficult for you to sleep at night. But despite that, you got back up and you kept pushing forward. I had an auntie who was there when the planes had crashed at 9-11 against the Pentagon. She survived, but the new mental scars she received that day changed her. She had just watched people she knew die before her very eyes, yet she survived. Life continued, but for many such as herself, things had changed. Despite all the tragedies she faced that day, you question how she was able to push through the trauma and the pain. How could one live on toward the light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I like to think that she pulled her way through. Martin Luther King had once said, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep pushing forward. My auntie had suffered a huge loss that day, but with the help of her peers and the determination to keep pushing forward, I like to think that she found her way through. Life, life could be cruel. It could plunge us into darkness and turn us into the worst versions of ourselves. But along the way, we meet those who change us for the better, those who change the direction of our lives. Resilience is built upon when we remind ourselves that we are not alone in this journey we share. We may stumble from time to time, but a hand, a hand will always be there, a helping hand to pull you out of the darkness. But the choice, the choice is yours to take it. Thank you. We're going to take a moment while the judges complete their judging and scoring. Our next presenter is Sheyung An.
It's not about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. My favorite quote from the movie Rocky is a lesson we all need to treasure. Success is not a short-term win. It is a habit, a series of continuous efforts. We may fail in between successes, but life is about getting up and focusing on your big picture. By remembering our why, we find the strength to keep moving forward during times of struggle. So, I ask you, what do you stand for? We can stand for many things, health, freedom, money, and power. But I, by navigating multi-cultures, Korea, New York, and Guam, came to appreciate diversity and growth. Born in Korea and raised there until age 10, I struggled to find my place in the world during my transition from my home culture to the Big Apple, also known as New York. Growing up, I was immersed in Korea's culture and language. I was not hungry to explore the undiscovered. When I walked into my fourth grade classroom at a new school a week before summer vacation, my classmates approached me asking where I was from, what my name was, and how old I was. As simple as these questions sounded, because I could barely speak English, I stuttered, feeling tears welling up in my eyes. It was a different world. I was confronted with a new way of life completely different from what I was used to. Seeing my struggle to communicate with my peers, my teacher decided to lower me, lower my grade the next day. When my fourth grade year came rolling, I was lost and confused, not only because I struggled to understand the foreign language, but because I struggled to develop a sense of belonging. In school, I had a plaster on a mask to fit in with the American culture, especially as an English as a second language student. I often felt like I was not good enough, ashamed of my background. Day in and day out, every day was a hassle. I stayed up until 11 at night with my mother, doing homework by using Google Translate to understand one word after the other. But because I didn't want my future to remain the same, I accepted my flaws, asking my teachers for help rather than hide from my fears and embarrassment. So the following year, I became one of the first people to raise my hand in class, even if my answer was incorrect. The summer of 2019, my family made another huge transition. We landed in Guam. Again, I was confronted with a different culture and people, but this time my 12-year-old self was ready. I drew on my experiences in New York to adapt quickly to the new environment. After finding that my peers were interested in learning about where I came from, I shared my diverse background with them, which was a great connection. My multicultural identity was a strength, not an embarrassment. It became my passion to explore diversity and seek growth. Ask yourself once again, what do you stand for? When our why is stronger than the defeats, we find the courage to take the next step. Amid the struggle to thrive in a new place and find my identity, I found strength and growth. Change, yes, it can be risky, uncomfortable, and different, but it is also beautiful. When we undergo changes, we discover a bit more about who we are. Today, I stand here not, not just as a Korean or an American, but also as a JRTC cadet of my Southern Highs Night Battalion. JRTC is a place I call home, and it's a place where my diversity was appreciated. Life is not about the number of punches we are bombarded with. It's about being resilient to achieve something greater than the struggles we face.
Again, we will take a moment while the judges complete their scoring. And our next presenter is Nichelle Torsellino. Third and final call for the girls, 400 meters. Third and final call for the girls, 400 meters. I hear the final call and check in with an official. Runners to your blocks. I put my legs down and wind myself up into starting position. Set, I slowly raise my hips to prepare to push out. Bang, the gun fires and I move my legs at a steady pace. Several demeaning thoughts race through my mind. Why did I join this sport? I have to beat this girl next to me. I need to set a personal record. Keep your, keep your form, stay on your toes. But none of them, none of them compare to the burning sensation that spreads from my inner calf to my thighs, to my arms, and eventually to my weak and brittle mind. Every single part of my body turns numb and I can't feel my arms anymore. Am I breathing properly? And suddenly, when I think about all these wild ideas, I have already finished my race. I repeated the same running event for three weeks in a row, and each time I ran my race, the same feelings were experienced, except I became a second or two faster. Why is that? Why does the very activity that I despise to do push me to overcome adversity and triumph at the end? What makes it so? Perhaps it is the praises that I want to hear at the end of all of this. Or perhaps it is in human nature to keep trying and trying, no matter how strenuous it is, to push through and defy the odds. This is exactly what resilience means to me, to successfully overcome and withstand the trials of life. Its Latin roots state that it is to spring back or rebound, to bounce back better than never before. I recall back to my running season, but another significant moment in my life is whenever my mother puts on the Filipino news channel, TV Patrol, if you're not familiar with it. Growing up on Guam, I cannot experience firsthand the happenings in the Philippines. I am instead imbued with nothing but helplessness and pity. As I eat the classic sinigang and rice combination for dinner, Every single time I hear my mother say, I sus, or sighs of sadness as she looks towards the television. Naturally curious, I turn my head to the TV and try to see what she can possibly be so anguished about. And every single time there is something to be anguished about. 
murder, uncontrolled crime, or a detrimental natural disaster. These trials that life puts these people through, expect them to easily solve it like how easy it is to say, I am resilient. Because it is indeed easy to claim, I am resilient, but it is another to go through the process of becoming resilient. These people, my people, and every single one of us go through storms in life and learn to trump the problem. But sometimes, these storms destroy us. That's why there are luminaries in our lives that ignite a spark within us to go out and try, even if the success rate is 1%, even if you don't think you can do it, and even if you have already lost. Watching the TV and eating my dinner makes me think that I can and I will persevere like them. My motivation is my mother. She is a public elementary school teacher serving the next generation of leaders. Every day, a portion of her students come in seeking to learn, but sometimes seeking needs. From a shower, to replacement of shoes, materials for school, or even a checkup for lice, public school teachers like her go beyond their resume description to provide basic care for their students in order for them to focus and succeed in academics. Just like how the Filipinos came back from a storm that destroyed their home, just like how my mother cares for the, and helps for the future of our island, and just like how I persevered through that 400 meter sprint, being resilient is an ability that anyone can achieve if you just try. Just try. Try to get that 4.0 in your assessment. Try to be first place in the race. Try to be tougher than the disaster. Try to create a path after you have stumbled. Resilience is all about trying, succeeding, then adapting to the change after adversity. It's about turning failures into lessons to become better. My people, you, and every single person on Guam and in the world have the resilience within us, but it's up to us on how we use it. Now, are you ready? Set? Go. Thank you. Once again, we take a moment for the judges to complete their scoring. Our next presenter is Soo-Min Kim.
As the COVID-19 pandemic finally seems to have become a minor concern for the public, it left people to struggle both financially and psychologically. Suicide rates have risen during the pandemic, especially among young people. Two years ago in Guam, when the COVID-19 cases were quickly escalating, 30 out of 100,000 people ended their own lives, while Wyoming, the U.S. state with the highest national rate, was only 0.5 people higher than us. Not only that, many people lost jobs that provided them with a source of food and comfort, creating an environment harder than ever to live in. They, the power that resiliency holds is greater than what we may perceive. Resiliency and a bright future click together like a puzzle. Our founding fathers, when they arrived in what we now call America, some for the purpose of making money or seeking religious freedom, had to face a plethora of issues even among themselves. They experienced heightened insecurity and uncertainty given situations that they had never faced before. Insecurity and uncertainty is what many of us still feel today as the pandemic seems to be near its end. Yet, the Founding Fathers ultimately paved the way for the freedom us Americans enjoy. Even seemingly trivial acts take great resilience. However, as each trivial act congregates with each other, the change it brings is unmistakable. In the midst of racial segregation, in public transportation in 1955, Rosa Parks believed in equal treatment and refused to vacate her seat for a white individual, which sparked, which led to arrest, but sparked the Montgomery bus boycott that continued on for over a year, but resulted in the Supreme Court ruling bus segregation as unconstitutional. Resiliency is involved everywhere whether that problem may be a major or a minor one. From being a target of bullying at school to the loss of a loved one, what happened has happened, but the difference sets in when one approaches the struggle face to face and strives to bounce back, and that difference achieved through resiliency is momentous. Look at many of the successful people today, such as the author of one of the best-selling books of all time, Joanne Catherine Rowling. Rowling had spent much of her early life in poverty, almost homeless, and her most accomplished novel, Harry Potter, was turned down by 12 different publishing houses. Despite that, she did not let herself sink into a pessimistic loop of self-resentment, and instead, she pushed on. On her 13th attempt, her novel was finally accepted and published. If she hadn't had the resiliency, she could have lived her whole life in poverty. Our nation's soldiers and allies, all who were someone's father, son or spouse, fought with immeasurable resiliency against the un un unbending Axis powers for years, protecting our country. As such, even if COVID-19 policies, such as distancing and indoor mask mandates are lifted and cases are less severe due to increased herd immunity. If we fall down and never recover financially or psychologically, then are we truly pandemic free? Won't we be dwelling on the effects the pandemic has rained onto us? It is only ourselves who can shape our own world and make a difference in our lives. Thank you.
Our next presenter is Ava Dunka. Sixty-three percent of people in the United States have been sexually assaulted. Sixty-three percent of people have had someone rip away something they believed was theirs to give. Sixty-three percent of people had to deal with the hell that came after. People can never imagine that their brother or their sister or their father or even their mother was a victim. One would never imagine that the girl in class who never has a frown on her face was touched when she was only 10 years old. One would never imagine that the boy who is now a D1 athlete pursuing his dreams was taken advantage of one night by someone he trusted. How do they do it? How do they go on with their life pretending nothing even happened? Well, it was fake it till you make it. Until one day, it didn't feel so fake anymore. They don't pretend. They work through it. Tooth and nail, blood and tears, they go through it and they make it out. They are resilient. It wasn't easy. It's never easy. The strength to continue didn't come to them in a pretty envelope packaged with kisses and butterflies and rainbows. Instead, when they were sore, aching, and writhing in pain, drowning in memories of their stolen innocence, that is when they found their resilience. They took it minute by minute, moment by moment, they stood firm in their boundaries and pushed beyond their comfort zones. They did for themselves all that they could. They did enough. They put back together pieces of themselves that they did not break and they nourished them. They watered themselves with purpose and rooted their beings in love. They became the good that they wished for. They became their own hero. Batman didn't come to save them, and neither did Robin. Surely, they knew the only person who was going to rescue them was themselves. So, they picked themselves up off the ground, wiped their tears, and carried their pain like luggage, weighing heavy on their heart until checkout. They built themselves back up, piece by piece, mending back together the parts that were a little more broken than others. They wore what they felt good in and took any stare as admiration for their model off-duty look. They dramatically sang Christina Aguilera's Beautiful in the Mirror and loved every bit of it. They took their healing by the reins and commanded its presence. Where did their pain go? It's still there. It's their body armor, evident in the way their boundaries are as firm as steel only bent, never broken. It's in their determination, evident in how they will not give up on what they want. Too much has been taken from them. It's their weapon, evident in the way they advocate for their fellow survivors. They are no longer silent. Let their stories ring until it condemns the heart of the guilty. They are standing, smiling, dancing, laughing, they stood tall in the face of adversity, and even though it still knocked them down, they got back up. They said, I love you to themselves and screw you to their perpetrators. They surrendered to the pain, but found the strength to transform. And in it, they found the power of resilience. Eventually, and most important of all, they forgave. That was their resilience. They are not what happened to them. So they let go. They freed it from their hands and minds and said the three words they haven't been able to mean in a really long time. I am OK. Thank you.
Our final presenter tonight is Bernard Malixi. Power of resiliency. As the Japanese proverb states, the bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that resists. Bamboo is a symbol of longevity due to its flexibility and resilience. Even in the harshest of conditions, it remains standing throughout the year. We, the people of Guam, perceive ourselves to be like bamboo, flexible and resilient as we go through the phases of life. Resilience is the ability to withstand adversity and obtain the vigor to persevere. It is not inherent, but rather a learned skill that is developed through the experience of obstacles. We are no strangers in possessing the qualities of resilience. Cultural resilience is an essential aspect of Guam's history. We have such a rich heritage with strong ties to the roots of the indigenous Chamorros. The Spanish, Japanese, and Americans have come to our island, influencing the culture, each leaving an impact on our people. This colonization posed threats to erasing the culture, yet the Chamorros tirelessly and proudly worked to preserve the culture to pass on to future generations. This resilience is evident in our island's thriving tourism, arts and craftsmanship, education, music, and others. It is true that individuals can develop it on his own. However, the power of resiliency is amplified when shared with others. Encouraging one another becomes a motivation, not to give up on any setbacks, but rather to persevere through vicissitude. Since there was a common goal, which was the preservation of the island's culture, Together, they were able to face any enigma that came their way. Thus, the resilience sets the tone for unity. The youth of today plays a significant role in our community and in the bigger world they partake. However, we should be guided by this powerful line from Franklin D. Roosevelt, which stated, we cannot always build the future for our youth, but we can build our youth for the future. But the question is, who is responsible for building this youth? The youth usually look up to their parents and some adults. They serve as their role models who support them unconditionally as they take risks, face obstacles, and learn how to bounce back from life's ups and downs. The demeanor of these adult figures promote learning and development of the youth's internal strength. As the youth assimilate this tenacity in meaningful opportunities, they will have a better understanding of themselves and others and believe in their own abilities. We have seen the youth's expression of resiliency during the, the COVID-19 pandemic. They viewed this challenge as a learning opportunity. For instance, they patiently receive education through online learning with the help of technology. On the other hand, we cannot forget about our island leaders who showcase their calm under tight pressure and tight pressure. During this time, they assessed the situation objectively and came up with creative and practical solutions to serve the people, especially those who badly needed their attention and help. The hard work of these models have empowered the youth to be confident and be mentally, spiritually, emotionally resilient. Indeed, cultivating resilience requires support systems and positivity. As Jada DeWalt had once said, when we learn how to become resilient, we learn how to embrace the beautifully broad spectrum of the human experience. Our collective hard effort and sincere determination will give rise to a resilient union amongst our people for a stronger and prosperous island of Guam. Nihitafan metgut, nihitafanatsu.
Nihita van Mesgun, si Zoos Maasi. This concludes the speech portions of the program, so we will not take a brief intermission while the judges complete their scoring and tabulators tally up the scores. While this is being done, we would like to present the governor's certificate to the presenters and alternates. I would like to call up to the front Mr. Michael Weekly, the DYA Deputy Director. Thank you, Cameron. Thank you, Devin. I'd like to call to the front um, the Lieutenant Governor, the director of DYA, Melanie Brennan, Senator Barnett, if you could please join us. Okay. Sergeant Maggie, Joyelle. As I call your names, please come to the front to receive your certificates. After we do the individuals, we'll ask that you return for a group photo. Representing Tizen High School, Mr. Daniel Cruz and Mr. Dell Evan Matthews. in High School, Daniel Cruz and Dell Evan Matthews. Thank you. Representing Southern High School, Cheong An and Andrea Leon Guerrero. From Southern High, Cheong An and Andrea Leon Guerrero.
Thank you, ladies. <laughs> Representing John F. Kennedy High School, Nichelle Torsellino and Ivan Aguilar. John F. Kennedy, Nichelle Torsellino, and Ivan Aguilar. <laughs> Representing St. John's School, Sumin Kim. St. John's School, Sumin Kim. <laughs> Representing the Academy of Our Lady of Guam, Ava Dunka and Pia Hart. From the Academy of Our Lady of Guam, Ava Dunka and Pia Hart. <laughs> Representing Father Duenas Memorial School, Bernard Malixi and Ethan De La Cruz. Father Duenas Memorial School, Bernard Malixi, and Ethan De La Cruz. <laughs> Gentlemen, if you can just stay up there. Gentlemen, if we can have all the contestants come back up to the front for a group photo. We can also have some of us um, come to the uh, second level. Okay, and we can also have we can have some of us uh, come to the top. Thank you, contestants. Thank you, alternates. Before we announce the winners, we want to thank the following for making tonight's event a success. The Office of the Governor of Guam, 
speaker and members of the 37th Guam Legislature, the Guam Youth Congress, the Governor's Youth Advisory Council, Mr. Joseph San Augustine, Executive Director and AV and Facility Management Team from the Guam Congress Building, the Office of Senator Amanda Shelton, the Guam Coalition Against Sex Sexual Assault and Family Violence, contestants and alternates, our judges, parents, teachers, administrators, students, and supporters. Thank you all. The results are in. We can now announce the runner-up and the winner. The runner-up for the 2023 Youth Month Octorial Contest High School Division is Bernard Malakasi. And the winner of the 2023 Youth Month Oratorical Contest and the next Youth Governor of Guam is Ava Dunga. <laughs> This concludes the oratorical contest for the high school division. Thank you all for your participation, attendance, and support.